Today's plant video is all about the Sansevieria trifasciata. Hey guys, for today's video, I'm going to pot up these propagations and I just thought that I should film this for anybody who is wondering how to propagate these guys and how they develop during the propagation phase. So for the first part of this video, I'll just describe some ways that you can propagate the snake plant. And in the second part, I will be dividing the plant and putting them into their new home. This plant is called the Sansevieria trifasciata or is more commonly known as a snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. And this is one of my favorite slow growing, low light tolerant house plants. It also does well outdoors in bright sunlight if you need a plant for a more sunnier area. And overall, I would say that this is a very easy to grow and easy to maintain house plant, whether you decide to grow it indoors or outdoors. I also think that it is very affordable and readily available in most parts of the world. So I actually don't have an original video on how I propagated this snake plant because I did this on a whim when I was moving the plant from soil to lica. And because I just didn't like the bottom leaves, I started to peel them off the plant. And I would say that this is maybe not the best way to do this. And if you do have a plant that sort of just grows up and tall and these plants can grow to be about three feet tall that the best way to actually take a cutting from it is to get a pair of sterilized scissors and to cut it into pieces at, or to cut, take a long stem cutting and then cut that into pieces and to place that into water so make sure that you are placing the cut end into water and then just wait for the roots to grow I think that water propagation is the easiest method, but of course soil does also work. So you can just take the cuttings and then place them into soil. I personally just prefer water because you can see the roots growing. So you'll start to see that the plant has new roots in a few weeks time, but this is a very slow growing plant. So you'll have to wait a while for the pups to grow in. And this is what the pups look like. So this propagation is around four months old right now. If you want your plant to grow a little bit faster, there are a few things that I have found helpful. One is to create a greenhouse effect by cling wrapping or putting cling wrap on top of your container. And this will just help increase the humidity which encourages uh, new root growth. Another trick is if you have sphagnum moss, you can actually place sphagnum moss into the water with the plant. In this container, this is my sphagnum moss container, and I do notice that there is a significant difference in the growth rate. The sphagnum moss actually encourages the plant to grow a lot faster. So the way that the Sansevieria or the snake plant multiplies itself is through underground structures which are called rhizomes. And these are just the root stem area that sends off these new baby shoots and the rhizomes like to feel crowded to encourage growth. This is the reason why I think sphagnum moss works so well. It kind of makes the roots of the plant feel a little bit crowded while still allowing for an ample amount of oxygen and water to reach the plant. So what I'm doing today is I am just going to gently remove these pops or these offshoots and plant them into a more presentable container. These plants really like to dry out in between waterings and they prefer a more cactus-like environment. So they're actually pretty perfect for growing in lica or these round clay pebbles. And I really like lica because of course it is also a water wicking medium meaning it draws up water by itself and this makes it very minimal in terms of plant care and a watering schedule. You can also try growing them in pumice which is a great medium for holding both water and air at the same time or you can try using a soil mixture made for cactuses. So now that I have removed some of the sphagnum moss I am just going to plant up these guys into this glass container. The snake plant is also a perfect bedroom plant because it is one of the best air purifiers of VOC or volatile organic compounds like formaldehyde or the exhaust from cars. And this plant is actively working during the night while we're asleep to absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen.
Okay, so now that we're done and there is no drainage holes in this container. So either I can go ahead and drill a drainage hole, which I don't like to do, or I can just be very careful and not overwater this container, which is what I usually do. So usually I will put in around one fourth worth of water into the container. And if you have this plant planted in soil, it is better to underwater than overwater. This plant does not like or does not need a lot of water. I actually had one sitting outside and it was kind of in water because it's been raining quite a bit the last few days. We, we've we're in rainy season right now and what I noticed is that one of the leaves turned to mush so I had to just cut off that leaf and throw it out so this I think is quite susceptible to root rot and stuff so you'd never want to overwater this plant the one that I have growing in a teacup sometimes dries out because of course the teacup is not clear and sometimes I just forget to check whether there's actually water inside the teacup or not. But I think the plant is actually happier when I forget to water it. For the leaves that the pups grew from, you can try placing them back into water and seeing if a new propagation or a new cutting will grow from it. I find that this, in the second time around, I'm not usually as successful and usually I just end up throwing them out. But what I've seen others do is they actually cut it at the bottom and then they place it back into water just to see if that will encourage new root growth and maybe encourage a new offshoot and just start the whole propagation process process again. So I think that is about it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy that. Oh yes, there is one other question that somebody has asked me and is it if they can continue growing the Sansevieria in water? And yes, the Sansevieria can grow completely in water. So you will sometimes see them actually selling this plant as a water plant with some rocks to sort of stabilize them. But I would say that if you're just looking for a method or looking for a way to grow this plant very hassle-free to use lica. And I just feel that lica gives the roots some sort of substance to cling onto while they're growing. Plus, I feel like the lica does also slow down the growth of algae in clear containers. So I'm not always having to clean out the container or flush out the water as much when you are growing it in lica. Anyways guys, I do appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please also consider subscribing for more plant and lifestyle videos. Do take care and I will see all of you in the next one. Bye bye!